Hello, hello. Welcome to this video. Welcome to the YouTube channel. I am here to give you a quick video about merge statements. So let me share my screen. So the title of this video is the solution for the merge statement with a null bug. What the heck does that mean? All right, I couldn't find a better title, sorry. So let me give you a use case, which I'll jump to the demo and you understand what I mean. In this use case, let's imagine you have a target table that you are trying to do the update using a source data, let's say from a staging table. Now the target table has some fields that have a null value in, in, inside it, while your source data has a value that is not null. And in this use case, you want to take the source data and override the or update the target uh, table. In addition to that, you only want to update the necessary fields that change. You don't want to update any metadata field like a last modified date or created date or something like that. So in this case, if a record changes within the mandatory fields, that's only when you want to update it in the target. And to implement this in a main statement, we have to use something like a, a conditional update clause, where in the update, we are checking that, oh, is this target field not equal to the source field or the other uh, target field not equal to the source field? So we have to do that for all the fields we care about. Now, in doing that, what if we have a null value in one of those target field? In that case, as we know, null, when it evaluates using an operator not equal to sign, if it evaluates with a, another literal value, is always going to return a null. Unknown is not equal to a value. So SQL always treats it as unknown. In that case, we have a problem because that record doesn't get updated. And I will show you, if I'm losing you, hang on, I will show you what exactly what I mean. And in this video, we're going to first go over the problem, and I'm going to show you the different approaches to resolve this problem. We have three different approaches we can use. It all has a pros and cons, and I'm going to tell you the one I use in my job, and I hope you make the best choice. So let's jump into the demo. I have a, a use case that I created a demo. I created a product table. Dimension table is our target. Product stage is our source. And here we go. First, I'm going to drop these tables if they exist. I'll create a table. It's very simple. It has an ID, name, description. Last modified date is our metadata field. We don't care about this in terms of um, tracking if there's a change in that field. So we, we send it. We run this for our product theme and our product stage our stage is our the stage is our table where we have the source data now again another thing I, I, I forgot to mention in this use case this use case is important to track in real in the real world if you don't know is it's important to track only the records only the fields that change only update it only when there's a true change in those fields because in, in our scenario, we have a downstream application that is relying on our target table to know what to what records to propagate and, and process. 
So if if you end up updating so many records that unnecessarily are not changing, and only the thing that's changing is their last modified date, that is not good, right? Because they will end up processing unwanted records, and it's gonna slow down your ETL pipeline. So that's why we only want to update only when there's a true change in the field that we care about. Now let's insert the data. So we have some, some dummy data. I'm going to insert into the product D and the product stage. And I'm going to select from these tables. So in the product D, as you can see, very simple. It has three records. You see, you have this null here in our third record. And in the stage here, this is what we want to use to upset into our target. So in, in, in this, we have a value here for that uh, product ID tree. And we have a new record. Now, let me quickly show you what the output should be when we actually run this. Let me show you that in Excel. So this is my Excel. This is exactly what we have in the target table and the source table. And, and this is how the final result should be. As you can see, the first record stays the same because nothing changed. You see in the source, there's no record product ID one. For the second re record, um, we have the product ID two in the this, in this source. However, like I said, nothing changed in the key fields that we care about. The only thing that changed was in the last modified date. But as we know, we don't, we shouldn't touch that record. So as you see here, this date should remain the same as the what it was in the target, which is the February third. But in the source is February fourth. So we didn't update that record in our target because we only care about the the name and the description whenever those changes. Now the Third record is the nail. We expect to update the null value in our target with the, the value that we have in our source. And we also want to reflect the date. And the fourth is a brand new record that we just want to insert. So that's simple enough. So in the first case, in the first case, we have the default code. So this is the code that will not work. This is how originally I wrote it at my job and I thought it would work. And let's run it and see what happens. You see the same merge statement when not when not match, I, I join on the primary key over here. When not match, I insert. When matched, I do the update. The key thing to note here is here I'm checking this condition that the target must not equal to the source. That way, I know that I only update only when there's a real change in the data. So let me run that. So let me look at the target table. As you can see here, you see the I got the records, right? Let me. So I got the four records. However, the target did not didn't get updated. And this is the issue that I had. It's a bug in our code. And let's try to fix it. So this is not good. After running the main statement, we still have the null. Because, like I explained, when it it checks the null against a source data. Null evaluates evaluates to or not or not. So it's not gonna catch this record to update it. 
So first solution, which may work, may not work, depending on your use case, is to use the is null or coalesce to replace the target uh, nullable fields. So in this case, all I'm doing is, if I have an is null on the target description uh, column, and I replace it with the empty string, in that way, I can now compare an empty string to a source description that has a value. In this way, it's going to evaluate it and pick that record to of, of offset. So before I run this, let me refresh my target table. Actually, we, didn't, we don't have to, but let me just do it. I'll do it here. All right. Here we go. So let me run this. Let me run solution one. And here we go. And now let's look at the target uh, table. As you can see, it worked. The dates are looking good, even for the flyer. And everything is looking good. However, let's talk about the uh, the cons, the problem with this. The first problem you have is when you do this is now first is now you are having to write more code. You have to understand the data. You have to understand the data type. Because if this is an integer, you cannot use a is null of an empty string. That doesn't is not compatible with the data type. So you have a problem there. Now you also need to understand if it's an integer or numeric field or even a string, what is the appropriate value to replace the null with and do the comparison with your source? Is it empty string? Is it zero? Is it negative one? Is it negative nine nine nine? So th these are difficult things to think about. You have to understand your data to make a best guess. Because if you make the wrong assumption, your source could have that value, and then this condition will not evaluate properly to the way you expect. So that's one of the biggest problems with this approach. Secondly, this doesn't work in PySpark. If you are using Databricks, I tested this approach. It doesn't like it. Having it is not. So that's that's why this solution doesn't always work. Now let's try a different approach. Let me refresh our tables. and solution two. Solution two is about, we have to do is to use the uh, is null condition. So we have to uh, um, add an additional condition where we are saying that if, after evaluating, comparing each of the fields, we have to uh, check that if that field is nullable, we just add an extra condition to say, update it when it's null. Update this field when, if you notice, update this record if you notice that the field is having a null value. This will blindly update each and every record in the target table whenever they say null in that field, in that record. So it doesn't matter if the earlier conditions matches. If it's is a null, it just blindly uses the source data to update it. In this case, it will, again, it will work 
it to achieve our purpose. As you can see here, let's run this. Run this, and here we go. It worked. However, what's the problem? We will end up updating more records than necessary because remember, when that value is null, you could imagine you have many records in your table. Some records that might have null odds every single time. Now, the source might have a null value as well. And if the source has a null value, let's say that this nail column or nail record has a null in the source, a null in the target, what's going to happen? It's going to still update it and update the last modified date, which is not what we want. It's uh, uh, updating records unnecessarily and that that will happen for many records if you have that use case so this this problem is to fix the issue this is more like it's gonna be it's better to be saved than sorry however we will have on the problem of having many more records that might end up getting processed by a dance downstream system that we don't necessarily want so what is the third solution? The third solution is a little bit more complex, but it does the job. So it's gonna first is to find out the true incremental records using the accept operator. And once we get that true incremental records, we're gonna use that to update our uh, target table. For those that don't understand what accept is, let me show you a very simple example. So if I have a, a table like this, one, two, three, what accept does is gonna get the, it's gonna first get the matching records, take it out and give you the remain, remainder. So if I have uh, on the lowest end, we have a one and two. So what accept does is it's gonna take the one and two out of the first data set and return the remainder because they match with the lower portion of it. So let me run it together and you see what I mean. You get a tree. So that's how accept works. Now, when it comes to nulls, it's important to understand that except trees null values just like a literal value. So if except doesn't treat it like when we see nulls in the equals to sign or logical operators, where a null, if you say is three equal to null, is gonna evaluate to unknown because null is it's a it's a unknown value but it, when it comes to accept it doesn't really treat it like that as you can see here if i have this data set above that has null one and three and i have a data set below which is um, maybe one and null based on the our understanding, except will take out the one and null and remain the three because that's how it works. Normally, if 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 null, if if it was to treat null like you normally treated the where condition in the, in a where condition or logical operators, it probably will still retain this null, it probably will say, oh, null is not equal to null. So it's not gonna catch, it's not gonna remove this, but it does remove it with the accept. So this is a good thing for us 
as we run it, you see it takes out the null, it is able to match it. So that in, in this case, we are good to go. So using this accept, all I have to do now is to first get the table, uh, the for the staging table has to be on the top because remember we are trying to get only the truly chained records from the staging. We don't wanna take everything. So we put the staging table on the top, but we put only the columns we care about, right? That's the key thing. We don't put the last modified because we don't care about it. And we put that our accept, and then you put the target table, and in the same order, put only the columns that you care about from the stage. And I will run this, but before I run this, let me make sure I clear out the reset our tables. Now, let me run this. Here you have it. See, as you can see, automatically, I filled out the, let me show you again. When I had the stage, I had three records. Now I filtered out the plier because it saw that it's exactly the same. Now we see the nail is getting remain in the stage because it's able to realize that the description is not equal to the null that we had in target. So this is a good thing. Now, the only thing we need still need to do is we still need to get the last modified date filled and to get that, what we'll do is to do a little bit of optimization where we, we push this data into a staging table, we get the ID from the, for the stage, we get the ID or the primary key, and use that to filter the staging table to get the entire record with all the metadata. So as you can see here, I just needed to get the last modified day. So I have to do this a little bit of step here, which is not fun, but using a staging table would definitely make your ETL much performant because trying to do everything in one step will slow you down. And now once we have this filtered staging or source data, we can use that to do our merge. As you can see here, I just copy the pasted the query into the source uh, uh, area and use that to run our merge. And the, the merge in this case, we don't have to, when, when we do the web match, we don't have to check, oh, is the target not equal to source because we already handled that using the accept uh, process. And we can just blindly update based on the primary key whenever it's match or just update because we trust that we already know that these two records, they have the real change that we care about. So let's run that. And when we run it, we get the results like we expect. So that is it for this video. It's very straightforward. However, the main thing about this last solution is that it is, it might seem like a lot of coding, but this gives us the best outcome according to our business requirement. And it's still efficient because we are using the staging table and we are using a SEP and getting the, the best result. Thank you guys. Like, subscribe for more videos like this. I know I will keep you guys informed and do my best to share more insightful videos. Thank you.